Hi, how's it going? I wanted to finally look at a tool I am welder, so I went looking around online. When trying to decide which one to go with, I found myself just browsing through welders in general, and I noticed something interesting. I've reviewed a lot of cheap welders, and it's pretty common for different machines from different brands to end up being just rebranded versions of the same thing. But I think that is becoming more and more blatantly the case, to the point that they are starting to all advertise the same features in the same ways. They all seem to use similar graphics with similar questionably accurate, barely more than meaningless claims of how their machine is better than the others. Claims which are made even funnier considering that they all claim the same things, so I'm not sure which others they're even talking about. Are they all using the same company to make their ads? Who knows? But in addition to checking out a Tulium machine, I was also curious if Yes Welder's latest machines improve on their older stuff. I found these two machines, and I figured I could satisfy three curiosities at once. Are Tulium machines any good? Has Yes Welder improved? And is the similarity between these two machines more than just skin deep? So what I have here on the bench today is the Tulium TL195S Pro and the Yes Welder Arc 205 DS Pro. They are both small, dual-voltage stick welders. The tool I am is advertised as 195 amps of max output. The S welder is advertised as 205 amps of max output. The TL195 is a bit larger, though they do weigh about the same. And they obviously have different looks. They are otherwise remarkably similar. They both have similar claims in the ads on Amazon and list virtually identical features. They both have a knob, which has a different color cap, but is otherwise the same. Both have a VRD button, a mode button, and a param button, all in the same layout. They both have identical power cords, and both have the same warning sticker that says that you have to let the welder rest for two minutes when switching from 110 to 220 volts. They both include identical 240 to 120 volt cord adapters, and very similar welding cables. The electrode holders are the same, both have identical aluminum cables of the same gauge, both with the same super soft, super stinky, easy melt insulation. They were also both boxed up almost exactly the same, the accessories were bagged up inside the box the same, and the manuals are obviously different, and yet somehow not so much. Both have the same warning sticker on the top, both claim to have adjustable hot start and arc force, as well as a VRD option and lift start TIG. Both also claim to be able to run 6010. Before we get to welding and testing out those claims, let's open them both up and see what they look like inside. Inside, you can see why the tool item is a similar weight, even though it's slightly larger. The guts are almost the same size. The two welders are surprisingly different considering how similar they are. They clearly share a lot of similarity in the design, while also being slightly different in almost every way. Both have a single rectifier in roughly the same place with the same heat sink. Both have the same general arrangement of IGBTs and heat sinks, but while both have four IGBTs on the high voltage inverter side, the tool IM has four 70 amp rated transistors on the output side, and the S welder has three 80 amp rated transistors. They use the same placement and arrangement of the heat sinks, but the heat sinks themselves are different. The main capacitors are different brands, but the quantity, capacity, voltage, and general arrangement are the same. The front control boards are different, but they clearly have a similar topology. They have the same number of connectors, each with the same number of wires, and both use the same LED driver chip. Both have the ground wire connected to the board, and the rest of the machine has to rely on any fault current transferring through the mounting screw. Both have a daughter board sticking out in roughly the same place, but they have different components on them. Also, the board on the S welder says ZX7200, and the one in the tool IM says MIG120B. So both of those boards are used on multiple welder designs. Quite a while ago, I reviewed a welder with the model number ZX7-200. 
and it had that same little board inside, as have a few other welders I've opened up over the years. Kind of interesting to see it still being used. The transformers in these machines are similar, but the one in the tool arm is slightly larger diameter. Like I said, these welders are very different, while also being weirdly similar. And that's actually true of many cheap welders from China. A huge number of them seem to use the same overall design, possibly made in the same factory in some cases, possibly in some cases in different factories, but using the same basic design as the starting point. Both of these machines are clearly built very cheap, but they are quite inexpensive, so that makes sense. Now we'll get them back together and do some testing. These welders function and perform exactly the same. They feel exactly the same in use, the settings are the same and behave the same, and the output of the two welders is also the same. They have similar open circuit voltage when the VRD mode is off, and they have the same open circuit voltage when the VRD mode is turned on. As for output, there's no sense dragging it out. Both of these welders lie about their output. Tulium is just like so many others, and yes, Welder hasn't yet found any Fs to give about rating their machines accurately. Despite being rated at 195 and 205 amps respectively, they both have the same output. Both max out around 160 amps on 240 volts and around 112 volts on 120 volts. These things are just the same 160 amp dual voltage machine I've seen probably at least a half dozen times at this point. Both machines provide around 124 amps when set to 160, around 112 amps when set to 140, around 78 when set to 100, and around 63 when set to 80. Also, regardless of arc force or hot start, these welders seem to struggle to keep an arc going more than most other welders when set even a little on the low side for amperage for a given rod, especially with 7018. The arc just tends to snuff out very easily. And neither welder will run 6010, despite the ads saying that they offer ideal performance with 6010. Even more disappointing is that they won't run 6011 either. Yes, welder, 6011, see if it'll run it. I don't always think to test 6011 when a machine won't run 6010, but I did with these ones and even when set pretty hot for the rod and regardless of the hot start and arc force settings, they just won't keep a 6011 going. The anti-stick mode is a bit slow to kick in, but it does work. If I stick a rod to the piece after a few seconds of full output, the output turns off. So I suppose that's something. And the hot start also works as long as the machine isn't set above 160 amps. Interestingly, sticking the rod is the only time I could see a meaningful effect from the arc force setting. Even with arc force set to 10, I could go from a long arc to jamming the rod into the workpiece and the amperage output barely changed. And whether set to zero or 10 or anything in between, the feel of the arc doesn't change. It never felt more aggressive or really any different at all. But if I literally stuck the rod to the work, the amperage does go up depending on the arc force setting. But even with arc force and hot start set at 10, neither of these welders will output anything more than 160 amps. So that means that when set at or above 160 amps, hot start and arc force do nothing. But when set at 160 or below with an arc force of 10, the output will actually go up to what the setting is when the rod is shorted. But only until the anti-stick mode kicks in and the output turns off. Needless to say, this is not how arc force is supposed to work. Overall, these welders are just more of the same. Some features sort of work, but it doesn't result in a welder that runs any better than one without those features. And neither of these machines run all that well to begin with. And they are just 160 amp welders built and advertised deliberately to misrepresent their capabilities. The data tags, the interface, the model numbers, and the advertisements all state false specs. This is willful, intentional deception. Yes, they are inexpensive, and a cheap price could be used to justify a simple machine with simple capabilities. It could even be used as an excuse for poor quality as long as the safety standards are met. 
Though with these machines not being submitted to any safety testing or certification, who knows? But being inexpensive should never be used as an excuse to overlook intentional false advertising. And this isn't something new or accidental. These machines are just the latest in a string of machines going back years. And they aren't just 160 amp machines advertised as 200 amp machines. They are designed and built to specifically show incorrect output on the displays. They are given data tags and spec sheets with totally inaccurate information. They are sold with the promise of specs which simply do not exist. And these companies know it. I spoke via email and on the phone with representatives from YesWelder years ago. I brought up these concerns then. They've absolutely known about these issues at least since then. And when I talked to them, they claimed to care. They claimed to be working on it. Obviously not. They obviously care more about pumping money into advertising and setting up Kickstarter campaigns to rake in millions of dollars peddling their latest machines. I know a lot of people seem happy with their machines, and that's great. If you got one of their machines and it works for you, I'm honestly glad it does. But somewhere along the line, they are being willfully dishonest. Yes, Walter's machines have been falsely advertised for years. They know it. They do nothing to stop it, and they continue to release new and revised models with the same problems. Anyway, sorry for the rant, but it's frustrating. And I know I didn't get super in-depth with the testing of these welders, but I lost some of my enthusiasm once I confirmed that they were basically the same 160 amp machines I've been testing from different brands for years. Maybe I'll make another video and test the Lift Start TIG performance at some point, but for now, hopefully this video was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. Take care. It does eventually turn off. Let's see. Um, oh, for Pete's sake. And it gives you so little time to adjust it. Uh, let's see. Set at 160, running a 1 8 inch 7018 arc force. Oh, for Pete's sake. Give me a <laughs> half a second to change it. Let's see. Arc force set to 10. <laughs> All right. <laughs>